Hello, everyone. I know everyone's excited about finally breaking that 70K resistance. But you know what? You ain't seen nothing yet. You know why? Because major wirehouses and large corporations are expected to buy in May and June. And that's going to spur up a lot more pumpage. A lot more of the analysts are expecting 150K or above. Not just major corporations, but wirehouses as well. And those are huge. And what is a wirehouse? It's a term to describe large broker dealers and securities houses. The term refers to a time when brokerage firms relied on dedicated telegraph and telephone lines to make financial transactions and monitor market prices. Obviously, no one does that, but they still uh, call themselves wirehouses for some odd reason. But these are guys with billions upon trillions of dollars. And Bitwise, a market insider, says they've been talking to many of them and they expect them to start buying Q2, which is April through June. And not only do they expect them to buy, they expect them to accelerate their buys after Q2 through the rest of the year as they get more comfortable with these products. So that means Bitcoin's going nowhere but up, up, up. Obviously, it's not going to be a straight line. There's going to be some retraces. Um, as we go along. But overall, the trend is not going down in 2024. So they sent this memo out to their investors. Uh, they said Bitwise was involved in serious due diligence discussions with large corporations. And this is from Cointelegraph, although many other outlets have reported this too. Uh, and major wirehouses and institutional consultants looking to increase their exposure to Bitcoin in the coming months. And I think that will be all throughout 2024. Obviously, I'm not Bitwise. I did not discuss with these people, but I'm just basing it on the reporting. So one of the great promises of the Bitcoin ETF was that it would open up the Bitcoin market to professional investors. So has it? Yes, it has. And we've seen that from BlackRock, Fidelity and others. Over the last seven weeks, we at Bitwise have heard from each of the following groups that they are buying Bitcoin ETFs, and these include individual retail investors, registered uh, investment advisors, family offices, hedge funds, venture capital funds, and asset managers. And today it has been exactly two months, I think, since the Bitcoin ETF has been expect, uh, um, accepted, and we were looking at January 10th for that. Just as important as who is buying today is who will be buying tomorrow. At Bitwise, and I'd assume at other Bitcoin ETF issuers, we're having serious due diligence discussions with major wirehouses, institutional consultants, large corporations, a lot of money. So yeah, we're going past 70K, we're going past 80K, past 90K, might get stuck at 100K, but we'll probably go past 100K as well. And this might all happen in Q2 or slightly in Q3. So yes, the BCB uh, prediction of 84K, not going to hold. Definitely going past that. None of the Fibonacci retracement levels really mean anything at all, as we've seen in the last few weeks. And as more of these wirehouses, corporations, and institutional consultants come in, I think we're going to see Bitcoin at a price that we couldn't think of before. So 150K, like looking at some of the predictions now, might actually be low. I'm still sticking with my 150K prediction, but there are major analysts predicting significantly higher. I mean, not like the million dollar predictions of Kathy Wood. I still think that's insane. But, you know, 200K, especially with like foreign reserves coming in, is definitely in the cards. So this is the trend so far. Based on the current trends, I suspect we'll see our first significant flows from these groups in Q2 2024. And I think these flows will accelerate throughout the year as the best, these investors become more comfortable with the new products. And, you know, like I think so too. And as they see more gains, they'll probably come in as well. And that's going to be good for both Bitcoin and altcoins. Yes, the ETFs for Bitcoin are going to be the only ones out in the market unless Ethereum actually gets their ETF passed. Um, but, you know, like MicroStrategy is actually buying a lot more. They just are uh, going out to buy 800 million more Bitcoin today. They're fighting with BlackRock and they'll inve inevitably lose for the biggest Bitcoin holders, although BlackRock does just represent its clients. So, yes, if you think the Bitcoin pump is great now, you ain't seen nothing yet, folks. I think we're going to double this price that we have now, possibly triple, depending on how much inflows there is, because everyone wants to get into Bitcoin right now. And for even more big news, 
Uh, MetaMask is trying out the first truly blockchain powered card and it's with MasterCard. So MasterCard and Visa are in this crypto boxing match to see who can be more crypto-ish. And right now, MasterCard's taking the punch and the lead right now. Although Visa is probably not going to give in any time soon. So MetaMask is testing a MasterCard payment card, which it says the first entire uh, entirely on-chain card. It will let users spend crypto on everyday purchases everywhere cards are accepted according to marketing materials Coindesk reviewed. Uh, MetaMask, the popular crypto for the Ethereum blockchain, is testing an entirely on-chain MasterCard branded payment card according to promotional materials and testing platform seen by Coindesk. Such a product would unite two giants of their respective fields. Obviously, MasterCard wants a big partnership for this big splash. It wants to be Visa and other competitors to the punch, but mainly Visa because Amex and Discover are much, much smaller. And MetaMask is the perfect partner with more than 30 million active users. It'll be the first ever truly decentralized Web3 solution, and it'll allow users to spend their crypto on everyday purchases where cards accepted. Now, my guess is like they're still going to convert to US dollars but it would be nice if they actually didn't but it is completely on blockchain and i do think they're going to either convert to maybe either fiat or usdc visa of course not to be completely outdone they're also working closely with the usdc uh, blockchain stablecoin and the solana blockchain on cross-border payments and smoothing out wrinkles like paying ethereum fees obviously if you use usdc stablecoin and solana blockchain on cross-border payments yeah Pretty good, pretty good. No Ethereum fees there. And of course, you know, like Solana might actually become a standard in cross-border payments. Although Solana is going to have to work with the uh, we're not going to go down all the time issue. So definitely good news for uh, blockchain payments and especially um, MetaMask and MasterCard. I don't really know if MetaMask has a token. I've never really checked into that. But it's exciting times for crypto as we see it. Uh, I also have to report on Arbitrum and their massive unlock. Might want to hold back on purchasing Arbitrum for right now. They're going to unlock 2.32 billion vested tokens on March 16th, and that definitely could cause a price drawback. Total t unlocks highlighted at Arbitrum will do a cliff unlock uh, where tokens are released in a lump sum at a deadline. And they're, re uh, they're almost doubling their supply all at once, so there could be a pretty big drop-off in price. They're going to unlock 2.32 billion worth of vested ARB tokens on March 6th, and that is 1.1 billion right now in locked ARB tokens, thereby significantly increasing the supply and maybe significantly diluting your investment. Not very good. Might want to wait a while for Arbitrum to actually finish this unlock before you go in on Arbitrum. Remember, there are other options like Optimism right now and like Polygon, which would do just as well, maybe even better. Um, so the thing is like uh, Arbitrum will first unlock 673.5 million tokens for its team and advisors, and then they'll release another 438.25 tokens uh, for its investors. So the 673 might be what I'm more worried about. A lot of times when the team gets the unlock, they will sell for profits. And, you know, like $1.41 billion uh, for team and advisors. Yeah, that could definitely create a sell-off. And of course, um, th that changes the tokenomics for ARB in terms of like supply and demand. So that might throw it off balance at least for a few weeks. I generally do not... Uh, tell people to buy tokens before a massive unlock. I still think ARB will probably do okay in the bull run. Although, like uh, with Polygon and Optimism and Base competing, it's not going to be quite as rosy as it was for Polygon in the last bull run. And of course, uh, there's also going to be people taking derivative or short positions against ARB, so we got to watch out for that. What might happen is there might be an unlock, a lot of longs liquidated as people are dumping, and then people will take shorts, and those shorts will get liquidated as well. I would actually definitely wait a couple of weeks before taking any kind of positions on Arbitrum, because if you take shorts, they might liquidate those as well. But I do think there will be an initial drop-off for ARB price, 
as people sell and then maybe another pump back to close to what the current price is as those shorts get liquidated because people are going to gamble because you know they're degenerate gamblers and they're going to get screwed both ways so yeah i would actually watch arbitrum's price with a lot of caution and i would invest in other things outside of arbitrum at the current moment uh pending this unlock so that's the news for today let me know what you think like and subscribe hit that bell notifications button thank you and have a nice day